Today, we enter into the paradox that defines our faith. Jesus Christ is glorified King and humiliated servant. We too are full of paradox, like Peter, we fervently desire to follow Christ, but find ourselves afraid, denying God. We wave palms in celebration today as Christ comes into our midst, and we follow with trepidation as his path leads to death on the cross. Amid it all, we are invited into this paradoxical promise of life through Christ's broken body and outward love in a meal of bread and wine. We begin this week that stands at the center of the church year, anticipating the comp completion of God's astounding work. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you to please rise as you are able. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, go into the village ahead of you and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says to you anything, just say this, the Lord needs them and he will send them immediately this took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them, ahead of him and followed them, were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And as we bless our palms, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through Jesus Christ. Today he entered the holy city in triumph. He was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and the branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross, so that, joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace, in the name of Christ, amen.
Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. It's okay to say Hosanna. Next week we'll practice Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. <laughs> Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. Now it's your turn. And please be seated. If you remember being under four feet tall, waiting is really hard. And so we are so grateful to have our children here to sing for us. And we're gonna have them sing first. <laughs> As long as they're here, if we could have all the children come up for a children's sermon, we would really appreciate it. Is that all right with you? Again, rather than having people come back and forth, we're guessing that that first Palm Sunday parade was a little chaotic too. So we're just trying to create the atmosphere of what was what that was like for everyone. And we're grateful for Miss Vicki sharing the message. I think that happened on Palm Sunday long ago too, big brother. It's okay. <clears throat> Good morning. <laughs> She'll be right back. <laughs> we will wait for she'll be right back. Oh my goodness. I don't have a pocket, so, but we'll make it work. Okay, I'll just walk back and forth, because I can. <laughs> Good morning, it is Palm Sunday, and you sang about a donkey, didn't you? Donkey. A donkey, do you know what a donkey is? Yes, you ride on his back like this. Everybody ride on your donkey, please, for Archie. This is, okay, everybody riding, great. Well, I have never seen a donkey in a Fergus Falls parade. But if you went long, 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 long time ago near a city of Jerusalem, 
you would have found lots of donkeys. Have you seen horses in a Fergus Falls parade? Yes. Have you ever been to a parade where they've thrown candy? Yes. You did that at school. Do you think they threw candy long, long ago? No. They did not. Why didn't they throw candy? It wasn't invented then. You are so right. That is right. Okay. Now, I've seen signs held at parades in Fergus Falls, and sometimes the sign says if they know their big brother is going to be in the parade, they'll hold a sign and it'll say, David, I'm over here, and it'll be written really big, and, and the brother will be waving because they're so proud that their brother's in the parade. Now, do you think anybody held a sign long ago that says, here I am, Jesus? No? Why? Why didn't they hold signs? Think hard. Did they have poster board? There was no paper and cardboard. They had a type of paper, but they had to make it. Oh, and they couldn't have made, you know, when they made paper, it was a value and they didn't waste it. So no, they didn't throw candy, they didn't have signs, but there was a donkey. And today, excuse me ladies, if I don't have enough booklets, I will figure out how to make it work. But you're gonna get a Palm Sunday booklet. And in this booklet are donkeys to color, dot to dot donkeys. And remember, Jesus rode on a donkey that was a colt, so it was a younger donkey. And one place in the Bible, it says it had never been written before, ridden before, so, but I can imagine the donkey that God found for Jesus would have been calm. And there is a way for you to make a Jesus and a donkey. There's patterns in here. So you're gonna need help from a mom or a dad, grandpa, or grandma, big brother or sister. And Jesus, in his parade, sat on cloaks on the donkey. Some of his, the people that loved him did that so he wouldn't get dirty and they threw cloaks on the road. Now a cloak can be like a cape or a coat. So back then we would have taken off our coats or our cloaks or our robes and we would have thrown them across the dusty road and the donkey would have come. And that was in honor of Jesus. So he sat on clean clothing, his donkey traveled on clean clothing. And sometimes they threw shawls and I have a picture of that for you to color. I have palm branches to color. And there is Jesus outside of Jerusalem on a donkey. There's another one when he's closer to Jerusalem. And there's another one where he's inside the gate of Jerusalem. And the people are hollering his name and hollering Hosanna. And I bet there's some kids who are trying to pet his donkey. It was a beautiful time, and that's why we have Palm Sunday today. We are celebrating Jesus. Now, here's the coolest thing, and I just learned this last Monday. All of these verses in the Bible, all four of them on the top, talk about Jesus and Palm Sunday and riding on a donkey. And when you get home, let your parents or whoever read you those verses, and you can even look in the Bible and find the word donkey. But the best, the best, it, to me it was like a secret, but we don't need secrets. Zechariah is from the Old Testament. And in Zechariah 9, 9, it talks about Jesus on a donkey, and Jesus hadn't even been born yet. In fact, the people that were there in Jerusalem were not even the same ones that wrote this in the Bible, or wrote it for the Bible. So we knew 
By reading the Bible, we knew that this day was going to happen long before Jesus even was born, which is a wonderful thing. At least to Vicki it is. Oh, somebody. <laughs> That's okay. You go ahead and chuckle. <laughs> All right. Today, you get a booklet. If there's two of you in a house, two kids, will you just take one booklet and share it for now, please, so that every house gets a booklet? And I know they didn't throw candy at parades, but Vicki believes in candy. So down here, Miss Christie, you can just dump it out, however you want to do it, and get, let them pick a lolly, okay? And Pastor, here's your microphone. And thank you. And as they're heading back, Happy Palm Sunday, this festival where we get to celebrate with our palm branches and remember this holy, holy week. We have a whole lot of activities after worship. Please join us for brunch. And we have activities in Festival Hall from 1030 till noon. Special welcome to our visitors who are here with us this morning, both in person, on the radio and online. We do have some welcome cards in the pew. If you would fill those out and put them in the, in the offering plate, we would love to welcome you in person as well. The radio broadcast today is sponsored by Maggie Larson in celebrating Gertrude Larson's 107th birthday. You heard correctly, 107. So happy birthday to Gertrude. And the flowers are sponsored by Roy and Sheila Graham in mem memory of their daughter, Kimberly. Please note that our Holy Week worship services, Monday, Thursday service is at 6.30, Good Friday at 6.30, and Easter Sunday next week at 9.30 and 11 o'clock with an Easter egg hunt at 10.30. Also, our Fill the Cup, uh, challenge. Uh, our goal is $10,000. We have $6,000 raised already. We have a matching uh, grant today of $1,000 from a member. So we want to push to that $10,000 goal. We have an unlimited match also for Easter. So thank you for helping make that possible. And thank you for your patience in the adjustments today. With that, let us pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our reading today is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord.
the 27th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And I am actually going to have you be seated due to the length of the gospel and so that we can put ourselves right there in the midst of the story. Now, Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, you say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But Jesus made no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor, who was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone they wanted, and so at that time, they had this notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. After they had gathered, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release to you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed over Jesus who is called the Messiah. While he was sitting there on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, have nothing to do with this innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of him, because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas to have Jesus killed. And the governor again said to him, which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? And all of them said, let him be crucified. Pilate asked, why, what evil has he done? But rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and he washed his hands before the crowd saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas for them. And after having Jesus flogged, he handed him over to be crucified. And then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's quarters and they gathered the whole cohort around him and they stripped him and they put a scarlet robe on him and they twisted some thorns into a crown and they put it on his head. They put a reed into his hand and they knelt before him and mocked him saying, hail king of the Jews, hail king of the Jews and they spat on him and they took the reed and struck him on the head and after mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and they put his own clothes on him and they led him away to be crucified. As they went out, they came upon a man named Simon of Cyrene and they compelled this man to carry the cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which is called the place of the skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among them by casting lots. Then they sat down there and they kept watch over him. And over his head, the charge against him, which said, this is Jesus, king of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it up in three days, save yourself if you are the son of God. Come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, were also mocking him, saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. 
He trusts God. Let God deliver him now. If he wants to, for God said, he's, for he said, I am God's son. And these two bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. Now from noon on, darkness came upon the whole land until three o'clock in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Lama Eli Leli Lama Savakathani, which is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And when some bystanders heard it, they said, this man's calling for Elijah. And at once, one of them ran and got a sponge and they filled it with the sour wine and they put it on a stick and they gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to save him. And then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. And the moment, that very moment, the curtain of the temple was torn into from top to bottom. And the earth shook and rocks were split. The tombs were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now in the centurion, the Roman soldier. Now in that centurion, those who were with him, who were keeping watch over Jesus, saw that earthquake and all this had taken place, they were terrified and said, truly, this man was God's son. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Holy and gracious God, we come here breathless. The reality almost too much to bear. Trying to make sense of this in 2023. Open our hearts and walk with us, O God. Amen. So do you have whiplash yet? We, we go from going, Hosanna, Hosanna, to the son of David. Lord, save us, save us. And we are singing and we are dancing. I saw you dancing. It happened. You can't tell me it didn't. And then we go from Palm Sunday to this Sunday also is known as Passion Sunday. It's this Sunday that kicks off Holy Week when we journey from these Hosannas to crucify him in a matter of days we're there and we need to know what happens between this Sunday and Easter that's what gospel good news is happening when we start waving these these palms and we put coats on the ground when when we arrived my husband and I went to Central African Republic when we went is it okay if I move, Leanne? Okay. When we went, uh, Central African Republic is a place in Africa at the very center, and it is, even by the continent of Africa's standards, a place to be forgotten. But it is a place that captured Bruce in my heart. We were mission visitors. We got to witness schools being started, one-room schoolhouses. How many in your family had a member of your family somewhere along the way go to a one-room schoolhouse? Yeah, that's how schools start because people want education. And so we were just witnesses to what was happening. And today, I'll have you know, those five schools turned into 22 and they are fully stacked with students. In fact, during horrible times, one of the schools moved villages entirely because of violence and it's a partnership between Christians and Muslims when rebel groups were coming in to say Christians and Muslims cannot get along. And those schools said, yes, we can. When we witnessed the birth of these schools, 
the women of the church all dressed in pink because that was the robe of the women. They were singing da 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 and they were grabbing palm branches, literal palm branches, not like pine trees around here or our ash trees or oak trees and they were waving, waving palm branches and they were so excited that we were there and we were so excited to get to meet them face to face, not just picture to picture. No one had been there for years, decades even and we got to witness this and then they were laying the palm branches out and we were thinking, we're not worthy. I don't know who you think we are but we're not worthy. We are here to witness the gospel through your eyes. Not only that, but this is a place where they make less than a dollar a day. And they had socked away a whole month worth of wages and made a whole feast that you couldn't refuse. Who would you make a feast for with a month of wages? Would it even be for your favorite family members that you would spend that much? on one feast? Uh, maybe, but maybe not. It was overwhelming grace. And getting to know our partners in this part of the world, that was Palm Sunday. Every single Palm Sunday, I will not forget that road when they came from hours and hours away. Down the road without a vehicle, without a motorcycle, without a bicycle to be there. Imagine on Palm Sunday, people are coming in droves to Jerusalem. They want to celebrate the Passover, to remember when God saved them, saved us from slavery to Pharaoh. That's what everybody was there for. They weren't there specifically for Jesus, but they had heard about him and they were excited. Something different's happening. There was weird air. Have you ever been in a crowd where there's weird air? You know something's gonna happen, but you're not sure what. The air is charged a bit. This is where if, if you want to be a part of a crowd, you stay towards the edges is what I tell my daughters. <laughs> right? Because a crowd can turn like that. And people were excited. Something new was going to happen. The disciples thought, this is it. Look how people are supporting Jesus coming down on a donkey. Now, most conquerors wouldn't come down on a donkey, would they? Oh, no. They come down on something much more regal, and kingly. But this king comes down on a donkey, someone who is going to serve, someone who is going to suffer. We heard from Miss Vicki how this had been foretold by the prophets. And we know that the Via Della Rosa, the way of suffering is coming. We also know roads we've been down. And we know that we don't want to walk down roads alone, do we? I tell you what, traveling from Fargo to Fergus Falls, just the interstate road, let me tell you, you do not want to go down the road alone. There are potholes on the road. There is ice on the road. There are those black ice pot where you're like, okay, I'm fine, I'm fine. Whoa, that was a fishtail. We don't want to go down that road alone. But we can also do that in a metaphor, can't we? I don't want to go down the road to milk break because my friend is mad at me. Jesus, I want you to walk with me. There's a pothole over there as big as my heart, and I don't want to go down that road of hospice alone. Jesus, I want you to walk with me. I don't want to go down that road because it says it's a dead end, but I don't know any other way to go with my addiction that I've been hiding and not even my spouse knows about it. Jesus, I need you to walk with me. What road are you on today? 
Because I promise no matter what road you are on, no matter what name you have given it, we have a Savior who promises, absolutely promises unconditional love, promises sight unseen, I will go down every single road with you, by your side. Despite the fact that Jesus knows we will be yelling crucify him with the rest of the crowd. Despite the fact that he knows even his disciples will abandon him, he will eat with Judas who will betray him, he will be there on the cross with the beloved disciple and one more and the women. And before all is said and done, he will even be thinking, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is a savior who knows those roads, the dark, scary roads, where it seems like nothing good can happen anymore in my life. And on that cross, where it seems like it's gonna be the end of the road for all of humanity, God does a new thing. And we need to hang in this week down the entire road, not just this day, but through Monday, Thursday, where we hear about the meal and the washing of feet. Yes, feet. Where we love having our feet washed, right? Uh-uh. Ask for volunteers. This is the one you won't get volunteers for. <laughs> through Good Friday, where we hear those seven last words and where many confirmation students will tell me this is my favorite service of the year if we let them come. Because we know Good Fridays. But the thing is, we have to continue down this road because it, it is not a dead end. Because when there's a Good Friday, we know in faith that Sunday is coming. It's not the end. This road, it's just the beginning. And we definitely want Jesus to walk with us every step of the way. This week, let's walk together. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you to the worship team for leading us in song. I also want to be doing a huge shout out to Shelly and Jim Hubbard who have helped lead the, the uh, Palm Sunday breakfast and Sue and Jerry Toso and I know Vicki Hahnemann and the seventh and eighth graders who have prepared the brunch and Christy um, Wickland who has coordinated all of the, uh, the activities. This is a day we get to travel together. What better, what better news? Thank you again, worship team.
Let us rise as we are sustained by God's abundant mercy. Let's pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Holy and gracious Lord, thank you for walking with us in this holy week. May you keep us mindful that this is not the end, but only the beginning. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for all of creation, especially those who are struggling with natural disasters all over this country and the world, from tornadoes to snowstorms to earthquakes. Help us be mindful of how we can reach out and be companions. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save the peoples of the earth and restore dignity to those who are scorned or persecuted. Guide world leaders. Continue to be with people where there is conflict, especially be with those in Russia and Ukraine. Be with those serving in the military and their families. And work through us to bring about peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We give you thanks for all those who are serving in this congregation, in the worship team, to confirmation students, to teachers, to those offering hospitality, to those working extra hard on liturgical arts, and so many more working behind the scenes. Thank you for faithful, faithful uh, ministry in its many forms during this holy week. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Save those who cry out to you, O God, in any way. Watch over those who are incarcerated, those waiting trial, those who stand and are unjustly accused. Be with those in need of healing in every way. We pray for Marilyn Berg, Jack, Joyce, Becky, Tony, those we name before you now, either silently or aloud. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We lift up our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated as our ushers come forward to receive this morning's offering. And thank you again for the offering of music. <coughs>
please rise. Let us pray the offertory prayer together and out loud. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with the words of grace and life. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is ready and everyone is invited. Please be seated. And a reminder, at First Lutheran, we practice an open table. This is the Lord's table. There is uh, gluten-free in the smaller dish, uh, wafers for those in need, and grape juice in the center of the tray.
Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Lift up your hearts and receive the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. We join in our sending song 338, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. Let us go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.